branches of the Dayton Metro Library System have been getting makeovers. Part of the process of reimagining what a library could be included putting art and creativity front and center. One of the core elements of our mission statement as the library system is about inspiring people's imagination. I'm sure everybody has had the experience of if you read a history book or a biography and it's got one of those little sections in the middle where all the photographs are bound together that you skip to that and you look at all the pictures and then you go back and read the text. And we kind of thought, you know, that the pictures help to start to open your imagination to the story that's in the text. And art in the library space can have the same function. It can open people's imaginations in another way just the opportunity to rebuild the entire library system at the same time is an extraordinary opportunity. I don't know any place else that's been able to do that. That's because of the imagination of our voters who decided to give that gift to themselves. We had known all along when we started the whole facilities project that we wanted to have art in the library. We did not put any money for that into the bond issue because the public shouldn't be asked to pay for art with tax dollars. So we had decided we would do some private fundraising. And literally, just out of the clear blue sky, we got a phone call one day from some attorneys who said, a client of ours has died and has left all of her money to the library. She wanted to remain anonymous, and that became our art fund. Reimagining Works is a partnership between the Dayton Metro Library and the Dayton Art Institute. The library decided let's use this anonymous bequest to commission regional artists to create new work for each of the 17 branches. So then they spoke to the Dayton Art Institute who thought, what if we actually use the museum's collection as the inspiration point for the artist to then create new work? So choosing the work from the museum's collection, it, for me, it starts out with the community. And the architects, before any plans are even drawn up, they are meeting at the library, inviting the community to talk about what's important to them. What do they like about their current library? What do they wish was different? What would they like to see for the future library? And what also is important in that community? So I might come up with 10 inspiration pieces from the museum's collection, and then the community decides what works that they want. And then we ask the artist to respond to the original art that we're using as inspiration. Miamisburg was interesting because it turns out that energy was a big part of their background from water then to atomic. And we have a work in the museum, Rockwell Kent, Endless Energy for Efficient Living, which is about the coal industry. And it shows this man and lightning and this big generator. So that work ended up just being this fit for Miamisburg. Miamisburg sits on the river, people fish, and so we have a sculpture at the museum by Robert Kepnick, a Dayton artist, of Huck Finn. So that, again, was a perfect choice, obviously, because of the book, which I believe was one of the most popular books ever and also one of the most banned books ever. So we had the energy, and then we had the Huck Finn book, and then the river. So. We had Susan Burns actually doing cast resin fish. She did 60, three different sizes, and there are actually three fish that you would find in the Great Miami River. Darren Haper, an artist with a very young kind of graffiti-esque style, just interpreted Huck Finn on his raft in a, in a pretty abstract, colorful, playful manner. And then we had Michael and Michaelic reference the endless energy and looked at all the various industries in Miamisburg and almost did like a historical collage and then used the blues and the dark colors in the Kent painting. And then you had the Native American culture that was there in the mound. Amy Kohler Anderson took that and created a three-part piece based on the Adena culture. So just a real variety of how artists respond and the ways that they think about how to use that inspiration piece and also draw in from that community. I think we've had between 30 and 50 proposals per branch and we're going to choose three or four. 
So by the time we're finished, I think we will have a close to 50 new artworks out in the community from our regional artists and for all of us to really enjoy. All of the art has been accessioned into the Dayton Metro Library's collection. It's an official collection. So there's this legacy of this art that hopefully will go on and on and on and to have been able to be part of that process. It's been a really special, very meaningful project for me to be involved in. We do have signage in each branch for each piece that's there that makes the connection for them between what they're seeing with their own eyes and the inspiration piece at the Art Institute. And the Art Institute is also putting up signage. If you go there, that will tell you, if you want to see some recent pieces inspired by this piece, here's where to go to look at them. So that's kind of neat, that connection back and forth. People just love it. As a trustee, I go to the openings for each of the new branches, and people walk in and you just hear oohs and ahs and jaws dropping and people just love it. It's having exactly the impact that we hoped it would have. It's making people just, you can almost see their spirits opening up as they enter these spaces with this wonderful art in there. It's sparking people's imagination. To have fine art like this, created by local artists, displayed in our libraries, I think it helps to change a community's self-understanding when they realize we have what it takes to do this. This came out of us. This is part of who we are. I think that really changes a community's self-understanding in a very positive direction. Dayton has always been a kind of a cradle of creativity, but I know a lot of people think, you know, that I, I, I can't be creative. Other people are creative. And I think this maybe helps people to think, yeah, you know, maybe we can be creative. We've got what it takes.